Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Charles Bickford in Edna Ferber's Farmer in the Dell on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we tell you a light-hearted story with a moral kind of thing that I think its author, Miss Edna Ferber, does excellently, and by means of which she has attained such deserved popularity. Always a shrewd observer of the American scene, Miss Ferber, in our story tonight, which is called Farmer in the Dell, handles one of the perennial themes of American life, the pull of town versus country on our different generations. And, as so often happens with Miss Ferber's stories, the outcome has freshness and a warm insight into the human heart. To play our farmer tonight with his homespun integrity and his deep affection for the land, we have chosen that distinguished actor, Mr. Charles Bickford. And now, a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Edna Ferber's Farmer in the Dell. May we remind you once again that for every occasion important to your friends and loved ones, there are Hallmark cards to carry your thoughts across the miles, across the years, or merely across the way. A Hallmark card says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And that identifying hallmark on the back says that you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Edna Ferber's Farmer in the Dell, starring Charles Bickford. Forty-five years of your life, you've risen at 4.30 each morning to be greeted by the familiar waking sounds of the farm. It's difficult to learn to lull in bed. Old Ben Westervelt had found this out since he had come to live in Chicago. The city seemed to have the opposite effect on his wife, Bella. She usually slept on undisturbed until she heard the pots and pans in the kitchen where Ben was getting his own breakfast. Ben? Milkman was just here. Must be after five o'clock. How long you been up? Oh, I don't know. You know me, Bella. Been getting up with the... Rooster for 45 years. Only now it's the milkman. What'll the neighbors think? You getting up in the middle of the night, getting your own breakfast. Don't know it's any of their business, Bella. You getting up? Well, you don't give me much choice, do you? Guess I better have a look at those eggs. Ain't even daylight yet. Nobody up in the whole block, as far as I can see. Only rubes get up this early. Oh, here, here, I'll dish it up. I don't know what the use was coming to Chicago if we're going to go on like we was on the farm. Might as well rot theirs here. Wasn't my idea coming here to live, leaving the farm. I wasn't ready to retire. Guess nobody ever rightly is, though. Till it's too late. Well, what's the good of all the work we did those 35 years if we don't live to enjoy it? Enough sugar in the bowl there for your coffee. Reckon. Didn't you never enjoy none of those 33 years on the farm, Bella? None of them? I hated it, and you know it. Oh, now, Bella. Not from the very first, you didn't. When you're born and brought up on a farm, you just can't hate it, because it's part of you, sort of. Oh... Forget the farm, can't you? Not easy, when you're only 58. When you've lived in one place all your life and worked hard to make something of the place. Pull up your roots and just walk off. Well, you'll get over it in time. Ain't likely. Not soon, anyway. And not here, that's for sure. You gotta stop sometime. Get some fun out of life. Live like other people. Gotta live like yourself, that's all. My hands just weren't made for pockets. 
Got to be folded on my lap. They got to take hold of things. Hard. Make things. My eyes got to see things grow. Things ripen. My feet got to have mud on them. And they got to feel soft black dirt under them. Not cement. I'll do up these few dishes before I get dressed. I'll give you a hand, drying. Them. Set still, Ben. Ain't enough worth drying. What's the funny? Oh, nothing. Don't know what made my mind turn to it. But I was just remembering the first time I met you, Bella. On the schoolhouse road, wasn't it? <laughs> you were sparking the buyer's girl. Let me see now. What was her name? Emma. Emma Byers. Wonder what ever befell her. Well, you can't rightly say I was sparking her, Bella. Well, folks used to talk. Folks never mind their business. Oh, I used to walk up the road, the old buyer's place after chores, just past the time of day. Like that day. Must have been back in 86. Don't seem like it was 33 years ago, does it? Mrs. Byers was pumping water from the well. Emma was just finishing feeding the chickens. Well, chick, 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 chick. Hello, Emma. Oh, I do, Ben. Thought you'd be all done with your chores by now. I am. Thought you might like to walk a piece down the road. You've got a calf that's all demon and five legs. I heard. I'd just as leaf walk a little piece. I ain't kind of beat, though. We got thrashers day after tomorrow, and we've been cooking up. Do you good, then. Walk a bit. Sure, Danda, you can come along. Come on, boy. Sure raise a rumpus down the road, ain't they? Seems like they make more noise this time of year than ever. Well, reckon they know they're going to keep still for a long time, come with her. <laughs> sure glad to see your cakes win the blue ribbon at the fair again, Emma. Oh, lots of cakes win blue ribbon. None of them's good as yours, though. Sure looking ahead, thrashing at your place day after. Oh, goodness, Ben. I don't do all the cooking. Did I tell you Pop says I can have the North 80 on easy payments? If, uh, I mean, one... That's a mighty fine piece of land. Your pop is an awful good man, Ben. Here, Danda, stop it. Stop it, do you hear? He won't hurt you, miss. Danda. Scoot, Danda. Scoot. Go on home, boy. You all right? Oh, yes. My, but I was scared. Oh, he wouldn't hurt a flea, Miss Hawkins. Oh, hello, Miss Byers. I guess you must think I'm a fool going on like a baby about that dog. Gosh, no. Most girls would be scared of him if they didn't know he wouldn't hurt nobody. He's pretty big. My name's Ben Westerfeld. Pleased to meet you. You're the new school teacher, ain't you? <laughs> Which way was you going? I forgot something at the school this afternoon. And I was just going over to get it. I, um... I hope it won't get dark before I get there. Uh, there's another dog down in Muller's that's, that's enough to scare anybody. He looks like a pony, he's so big. Oh, but you were going the other way, weren't you? Well, we weren't going no place in particular. Where are we, Emma? We'll be pleased to keep you company down on school and back. Hey, Emma? Oh, yes. Yes, we'll be glad to. Seems like the buyer's girl left the farm right after you and I was married, didn't she, Ben? Yes. Yes, she did. Went up to live in Vandalia, I think. Then married a young fellow in the produce business here in Chicago. I guess she didn't like farming neither. Only she was smart enough to leave while she was still young. While she still had time to live. You sure make it sound awful, Bella. Why, them was good years. The best years a man ever had. Nothing like living close to the soil. Your hands dirty. Only with clean kind of dirt. Kind of dirt things grow in. Things that feed people. People right here in Chicago. Oh, I know all about that. And we had fun, too. Lots of it. Corn husking bees, dances in Muller's barn, skating on the I barn. don't remember that I ever had time for things like that. Well, right at first you did, though. That first year or so, before John came along. John. John. And then Dyke and Minnie. Mm. Dyke ought to be coming home any day now. 
now that the war is over. Lots of the boys back from France already. Armistice was signed only last November. Takes time to cart two million men back across the ocean. But he'll be along. Any day now. And thank goodness he'll be coming here, not to the farm. Maybe he can get to be something. Instead of just another farmer. I reckon Dyke can be anything he likes to be. But I suppose more than likely he'll care much for farm after all them foreign places he's been to. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Farmer in the Dell, starring Charles Bickford. Uh, we had a big discussion at our house last night. It all started when someone tried to define the most powerful force in the world. You know how those conversations are. Yet, surprisingly enough, at the end of this one, we did agree on one point. And that is that without words, no idea or thought can ever take shape, let alone reach enough people to become a force. Yes, words are powerful, and those who make Hallmark cards respect this power. They know how a sincere message of encouragement can lighten sadness. How a friendly greeting can make a happy occasion happier still. How the right words can strengthen ties of affection. That's why so much emphasis is placed on the words in a Hallmark card. They must accurately re reflect your feelings for the occasion and for the person receiving the card. They must, in fact, say what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And every year, more and more folks are discovering that Hallmark cards do just that. So it's become something of a tradition to look for Hallmark on the back, for in addition to the message inside the card, that Hallmark on the back says you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Farmer in the Dell, starring Charles Bickford. Habit nurtured by roots that lie deep in the soil is not so easily cast aside, and retirement when the body is still strong and the spirit is untarnished can be a real tragedy, or worse than a tragedy, a waste, and the cause of endless arguments between Ben Westervelt and his wife Bella. the last of the breakfast dishes. Sure you don't want me to dry them, Bella? Let them set. Just thought it'd give me something to do. Seems like there's never nothing to do anymore. Always feels like there's something I didn't get done. Something I ought to tend to. Never was enough time to get done on the farm. Oh, we managed. Hard work never hurt nobody. You had two hired men and two boys. It's harder on the women folk. Well, you had Minnie. Oh, Minnie got married when she was hardly 18. Yes, yes, she did. You didn't appear too sorry, as I remember. Well, Mother looks after her own. And Gus was a good catch. Done well here in Chicago these last seven years. Yes, too. he has. There's no denying that. Though I had my doubts during their courting days. Didn't seem like the right kind for Minnie somehow. But you was right, I guess. You and John. John. Summer of 1912. He was fixing to go back to the university. It was last year. I don't want to talk about it, man. Minnie and Gus were in the parlor. We were in the kitchen. You, me, John. Plays nice, don't she? When are they getting married? No real date's been set yet, John. Sometime this fall. Where's Dyke? <laughs> Where do you suppose? Out in the barn, tending that sick calf of his. Is he going to be out there all night? It's after nine o'clock. Reckon calves no more people get sick of well by the clock, Bella. Dyke knows what he's doing. Don't you worry, Ma. He'll get over it once he gets to college and away from here. They all do. Let me tell you something, son. Neither you nor Dyke could ever see the insides of college if it wasn't for this farm. Oh, sure, I know, but everybody doesn't want to be a farmer. 
take Gus in there, for instance. I've been thinking about Gus. Now, don't you go starting on that again, Ben. The only reason you don't like Gus is because he's from St. Louis, and they're going to live in Chicago. Lots of good folks in St. Louis and in Chicago, and in all the towns around. Lots of them come from the farms, too. Most of the good ones, anyhow. Shh, shh. Minnie, stop playing. Oh, no. You really have to go so soon, Gus. It's hardly nine o'clock. I have to get the rig back to the stable and commerce before they close up, baby. Oh, are we leaving, Gus? Well, not by choice, believe me. I'm catching an early train to Chicago. And you won't be down this way so often for a spell. <laughs> Try and keep me away. I got a girl down here, haven't you heard? <laughs> Come on, Gus. I'll walk you to the barn. All right. Well, good night. Thanks for the supper, Mrs. West. Right. See you good soon night, again, Gus. Good night. Good night. Seems like you might have gone out with him, John. Help him hitch up the horse. Oh, Dyke's out there. He'll give him a hand. Well, reckon I'll turn in. Oh, John. Yeah? You'll give the boys a hand tomorrow morning, won't you? Like get that corn in the silo before we get more rain. I don't want to, but I will. Gotta go to town first thing. Note due on that last 80 acres by the river. Be back middle of the morning, though. Coming, Bella. We had an accident this morning. What happened? John, he was on top of the conveyor. Where is he? By the silo. Wait, Dad. Nothing you can do there. Where's your ma, Dyke? In the house. Bella. Bella, you in? Bella. I hope you're good and satisfied then, Mr. Felt. I hope you're good and satisfied now. You was bound you'd make a farmer out of him, and now you've finished the job. Bella, you don't know what you're... Don't I? I hate the farm, you hear? I hate it. Just like he hates it. Just like Minnie hates it. But you still have Dyke, don't you? Well, go on out there then and try your head to Dyke. Go on, make a farmer out of Dyke. <laughs> Well, don't. You better lie down, Isabel. You know something, Bella? Funny thing. Even that day, I didn't believe you hated the farm. Took you more than five years to find out. No. Dyke's going off to war had nothing to do with it. No more than John had. Or Minnie's getting married. What made you give in then? What made you quit and come to Chicago? A man can't live with a woman for more than 30 years without loving her. Without her bitterness hurting him. Maybe I had a hope that away from the place you'd get lonesome for it. And want to go back. No, Ben. I'd rather be dead. Might as well be dead. Not even if Dyke wanted to. Dyke? He went to war to get away from it. Oh, it was you that thought that. You wanted him to get away from the farm so bad. But don't you remember what he said, Bella? About the war and the farm? But you don't understand, Mom. I like the farm. And if guys like me didn't go to war, we might not have any farms to come back to. That's why we're fighting the Kaiser and the Huns. To make the world safe for democracy. That didn't sound like he was running away from the farm, Bella. Well, he was young and hot-headed. They all were. He just wanted to make you feel good. You'll see when he gets back. I don't know. I just don't understand it somehow. I'm lost, Bella. Just lost away from the place. Well, I better get dressed. You going somewhere? Minnie kind of wanted me to go down the loop with her, help her pick out a couple of dresses. Then she and Gus are coming over for supper. Oh, well, reckon I'll go for a little walk then. Ma'am, the drugstore was telling me there's a big market here. Down on South Water Street, I think he said. Well, don't be gone all day. Remember Minnie and Gus are coming over. I'll be back. Well, Emma, you win. 
When it comes to driving a bargain with you, I quit. They'd be dead. Oh, no, Joe. It isn't as bad as all that. You, you're Emma Byers, ain't you? Oh, that's right. I'll be with you in a minute. That all, Joe? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, I guess you wouldn't recognize me after all these years. What? Why, Ben. Ben Westerveld. Well, well, how are you, Emma? Uh, and what in all get out are you doing around here? Oh, running a kind of produce business, Ben. But how does it happen that you're keeping it up, Emma? All this time when... Why, you must be anyway. Well, it ain't that you look it, but... <laughs> That's all right, Ben. I couldn't fool you on that. And I'm working because it keeps me happy. I want to work till I die. My children keep telling me to stop, but I know better than that. I'm not going to rust out. I want to wear out. And your husband? He's... He's dead, Ben, these 20 years. I knew garden stuff. If I didn't know anything else, came natural to me, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I see. And you, Ben? What about you? Me? Well, I'm... We're living here, I suppose. Living here. Left the farm, Ben? Retired? Yes. At your age, Ben. What's the good of all that work if you don't live to enjoy it? We did all right. At 420 acres. But Bella never seemed to like it. Lost one son. Then Minnie got married. Dyke's about ready to come home from France. We, well, we just decided it was time to give up and live in town. Who do you think you're kidding, Ben? What? Oh, I've seen others, Ben. Farmers who quit and come to town to live. But you're not like them. Oh, Ben, you can't stay here. It'll kill you, poison you. Well, you've got another 20 years of work in you. What's ailing you? You go back to your wheat and your apples and your hogs. No, Emma, I can't. Too late, that's what. Too late. You listen to me, Ben. You do as I tell you. You go back where you belong before it is too late. For there isn't a bigger man-sized job in the world. You go back and do it. to see you, Papa. How are you, anyway? Dyke. Oh. Dyke, where in the world? He just got here, Ben. Just this minute. <laughs> he came into... Uh, what's that place, Dyke? A Hoboken? Yeah, yeah, that's it, baby. Only yesterday, wasn't it, Dyke? And he sent a wire to the farm. Didn't you get our letters, Dyke, so that you know we was here now? <laughs> He's only got an hour more. They got to go to Camp Grant to be... Uh, what is it called? Immobilized, baby. Come out to our place just on a chance. <laughs> Ain't he big, though? Ain't he the old man? Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> Say, Pop, you ought to see the way the Frenchies farm. They got only about an acre each, and, gee, the way they use every inch of it. If there's a little dirt goes into a crotch of a tree, they plant a crop on there. Oh. They do, <laughs> eh, son? Well, sure. And here we got 400-some acres. Nobody seems to care. Dyke. Gosh. When you see people just about starving over there, you realize how lucky we are. Why, well, we could just about feed the whole world if we had to. We got everything here. Why, well, you don't realize what a great country we got till you see some of the others. Dyke, you're just home. Oh, and... not that they ain't smart. And they work hard, too. Why, you ought to see the old birds, Pop. Women, folk, and men about 80 years old running everything on the farm. They had to. You gotta leave in an hour. Can't you forget the farm? Look, kid, I can get you a job at the factory for four fifty a day. Six when you learn it right. What do you mean, a job? Who wants a job? Oh, for Pete's sake, Dyke, wake up. Ma and Pa are living here now. They bought this place. Now, don't be a rube all your life, kid. Papa. Papa, I, I've been counting on the farm. I've just been living on the idea of coming back to it. That's what I've been fighting for. That's all right, Dyke. You're going back. So am I. Ben. Yes, Bella. I've got another 20 years of work in me. So have you. 
But only you yourself can decide what you want to do. Me and Dyke's going back to the farm. Dyke, son. Uh... Oh, Ben. It means a lot to you, don't it? Yes, Bella. A lot. And to you, too. Only you don't know it like I do. Oh, Ben. Like you said. A man and a woman can't live together for over 30 years without there being love between them. That's right, Bella. That's why we have to go back. You and Dyke and me. Back to our wheat and our apples and our hogs. Yes, sir. There ain't a bigger man-sized job in the world. Charles Bickford and James Hilton will return in a moment. We often describe the stores where you buy Hallmark cards as fine stores. They are. You'll find them always eager to help you in any way. For instance, right now, these stores have a gift for you, one I'm sure you'll enjoy and use over and over during the coming year. It's the Hallmark date book for 1951. In it, you'll find every day of 1951 arranged in calendar form with plenty of space for writing in the names of friends you want to remember on that date. No more forgetting birthdays and anniversaries with this convenient little book acting as your social secretary. There are separate pages for names and address of all your friends. A good way to keep your Christmas card list, as well as other information you'll find useful. You'll surely want this 1951 date book. And the store where you buy Hallmark cards will gladly give you one. It's his present to you for friendship's sake. Here again is James Hilton. Thank you, Charles Bickford, for a grand performance as Ben in our play tonight. It was a good play. And I'm happy to appear on Hallmark Playhouse, Mr. Hilton, because I think you and the makers of Hallmark Cards are both doing a good job. You, by selecting stories for all family listening, and Hallmark Cards by making it easier for all of us to be more thoughtful of other people. That's important, believe me. And that's a very fine compliment, Charles, and I'm sure the makers of Hallmark Cards appreciate it as much as I do. Thank you for both of us. What have you selected for next week? Next week, we shall present a delightful story by James Ronald called Old Soldiers Never Die. It's about a retired general who faces the problem of being left at home while his country's at war, only to discover that not all victories are won on the battlefield. And for our star, we are indeed happy to welcome that very fine actor, Raymond Massey. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Axel Grinberg. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying, Good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Charles Bickford will soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Jim Thorpe, All-American. The part of Bella tonight was played by Lorene Tuttle, Margaret Brayton was Emma, and Sam Edwards Dyke. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time, when James Hilton returns to present Raymond Massey in James Ronald's Old Soldiers Never Die. And the week following, Kurt Carroll's The Golden Herd, starring Bruce Cabot on the Hallmark Playhouse. <laughs> this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.